So hello everyone. I'm doing a small workshop about making plugins and making plugins specifically with DPF. And um, first of all, uh, if you're here, you probably know what a plugin is, right? <laughs> I, I hope so. And um, you probably know there's different types of plugins. There's uh, simple audio effects that just get audio, apply some effect and output some audio. There's MIDI filters. There's synthesizers that take MIDI and produce uh, some other audio without audio input, stuff like that. And you probably need to know there's different formats. You know, there's LATSPA, there's DSSI, there's LV2, there's VST. And then you can also have standalones and things like that. And uh, I want to talk about why I made DPF. Um, when I was starting to make plugins, uh, there was kind of several formats I needed to support at the same time. Uh, LV2 was still a new thing, so a lot of hosts still support LATSPA. Not, not all hosts support LV2. And it's still kind of the same situation today. Most, most hosts don't support LV2 yet. Uh, quite of them now support VST. Uh, I also had to repeat the same code for every plugin. Like if I want to support MIDI in LV2, I have to support the atoms, the, every, everything like that. If I want to support time position to get to know where, what's the BPM, what's, well, the host information about the tempo, I need every single time to have that specific code and it's time consuming and it's repeated in all, all of the single plugins. Well, uh, sometimes it's, it's not always easy to understand and documentation sometimes is also not clear enough, especially for the VST. Uh, there's al always some confusion between the developers. Well, it's a bit, a little bit messy. Uh, especially on LATSP and LV2 and Linux uh, APIs, there's usually not high level C++ abstractions, like a C++ class that I can just use and then get a plugin right away. And um, well, there are already some projects that do things like this, like the Juice and uh, iPlug but some of them don't support Linux. Uh, some of them support Linux, but not so great. And well, in the case of Juice, it doesn't have a liberal license. So if you want to make a commercial plugin, you have to buy an expensive license. And also there's issues with the VST SDK because it's not compatible uh, with GPL. So if you want to release a VST plugin using GPL code, some people don't don't like the situation. So uh, these are the main reasons why I made DPF. Uh, on DPF, there's no VST DST, DSTK issues uh, because I don't actually use the SDK. I use the free header and then some custom code to handle everything that is needed. Uh, on DPF, you have um, a very simple. It's limited on purpose. I don't want to support everything to make a big mess of it. And it's a C++ API, as simple as possible. Uh, it exports different plugin formats. Uh, right now, there's LATSPA, DSSI, LV2, VST, and also a JAX standalone mode. It's easy for testing. There's UI support built in. In this case, it's using Puggle that a lot of people are liking right now, the OpenGL. Uh, variant. I made some classes to make the beginning a bit easier. Uh, everything regarding atoms, regarding connect port, regarding VST stuff, everything is hidden away. You only have the simple API to work with and then your plugin is ready. And well, this is also a nice thing. It's cross-platform. Not only you can build it on Linux, 
You can also build it on macOS and Windows. And uh, recently, I know that it works on FreeBSD, so it should work. Um, if it has X11, it should, wor it should work there. <laughs> There's a couple things that DPF cannot do. In this case, the complex buses setup. If you have like um, this, there's some complex spatial uh, setup. I don't want to support it. I just want more kind of simple plugins because every API is different. It, and LV2 doesn't support buses yet, the like extra ports dynamically. So maybe for the future, but yes. Do you mean stuff like side yeah, he asked about sidechain. Uh, there is a sidechain already in there, a sidechain property for an audio port. But besides that, nothing else. Um, uh, for example, if you if you have a plugin that can work on mono, stereo, surround, some weird setup all at the same time, there's the VSC three standards and audio audio units. And maybe some other standards support that. That you can just load the plugin, then the host tells the plugin, I want you to work like this, then it just works. Uh, on DPF, the ports are static. You have a mono version or stereo version, and nothing besides that. Okay. One another thing that doesn't do, although you can work around it with instance access, but it's not. I don't recommend it. It's sending messages from the TSP to the UI. It's usually the other way around. When you load the file, the UI tells TSP, I load this, and then the state is saved automatically for you. Uh, if I implement this, I break some compatibility with some standards, which I don't want. And I'll, you'll see it later why. Uh, it also doesn't support some advanced performance stuff. In this case, this is just for LV2. Uh, the multiple MIDI ports, it's an LV2 specific thing. And uh, variable tempo in the same process, in the same run. Like, if you have um, a timeline and then the tempo is ramping up, the host can process the plugin on that, uh, on that period of time where the tempo is ramping. On VST, on Jack, and I'm not sure if other standards are like this. You cannot have tempo uh, variations in the same process callback. LV2 can, because it's out on ports. They can send uh, the events as they, uh, as they are needed, but other standards not. And well, to make it more simple, it doesn't support that. And I don't think there's a single plugin that handles this well, but well, if if it becomes an issue, then we'll do something about it. Uh, there's no audio unit support for now, because I'm not really a Mac guy. If someone wants to do it, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so, well, uh, assuming everyone here has a, lap has a laptop, um, I want to go, go with you, go through with you, to set up an uh, an example plugin right now, we'll set up the name, uh, some license. If you want the sub module or not, I'll explain it and what built system. Uh, to make things easier, we can just take one of the plugins that are already made and fork it, and then start making our own changes. And about the sub module. Um, you might want to have DPF as a Git sub-module, then you can just update it every time there's some change. Or you can have it as a, a local folder that you have to manually update and merge changes or something like that. Um, if you have a local copy, you have it managed it yourself, like a fork of DPF. If you have it as a simple sub-module, you can just send me the fix, I implement the fix, and then you update. It depends on if you want to make changes to the actual DPF code or not. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
if if you don't know the the full code is on GitHub, and I'm not sure if that URL is visible. I'll open a text editor and make this big. You have it on github.com slash this throw. Then you have DPF for the actual DPF code. And what what we actually want now is the plugin examples. So DPF distro.com slash distro slash plugin examples. And uh, I can actually, oh. if you have a GitHub, GitHub account, you can fork it now or uh, just get the, the clone address there and make a local copy. Mm. I'm going to fork this for myself. You're familiar with GitHub, I hope, right? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> and well, now I'm going to take the URL and clone it here somewhere. Always forget something. Um, I kind of want want you to follow with the laptop if possible. So um, I can paste here some URL that can, that you can work with without making without having a GitHub account. Oh, this is. This throw a bit less. Yes, the URL on the bottom allows you to clone it uh, without having read write access. And uh, let's see, let's see. I, do you guys want to follow? Right, I hope so. Yeah. Do you have it? Just a second. You also have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, first, we need to decide on a name for the project. Uh, I just, for making things simple, uh, we'll do a, a simple gain plugin that just uh, Raises the volume or lowers the volume. Something simple. Uh, yes, I, I use it. I didn't explain this. When you clone that repository, you can do a git clone with recursive. That takes the sub modules in that, into account. If you didn't, it's still cloning. When using sub modules, you can do this. Okay, and then that automatically clones the DPF for you in the DPF folder. The plugin examples should still cloning. <laughs> oh. uh, but I can show the rest of this. Okay, while it's still cloning, uh, I can show you.
Yes. Uh, if when you want when when you have a plugin, the first file you need to do is the distro plugin info dot h, which defines come on defines uh, how the plugin what the plugin is, what it has, stuff like that. You can see it. It has a name, wherever it has a UI or not, if it's a synth or not, the number of inputs, in the case audio, outputs as well, and then some uh, features. In DPF, when you disable some features, they actually get um, kind of commented, commented out from the code. For example, if you don't want time position, you, you won't have on your final plugin at time position port in LV2. Um, in the, this is so that if you want to build a simple plugin, the output is actually a simple plugin and not a generic wrapper that's supposed to work for all the plugins. Uh, next, you have your plugin class. This is just a, a basic overview. You subclass the, pl the plugin. You have the basic information, saying the name, the, the maker, license, stuff like that. Parameters and a process, as simple as possible. For the UI, is also as simple as possible. In this case, I have an image knob. I'll show you in, this, in a bit. A DSP callback. So that when the parameter changes, you get a new your UI saying this parameter has changed. Um, and I also have an knob, which, yes, this is now cloned. Uh, do you guys have the repository cloned already? Yes. So let's start. Uh, in the Usually in my repositories, I have everything inside the plugins, the plugins code. We can take, for example, the information. We can call it gain. Delete everything else. And then on my make, main make file. Yes. I just renamed the info into gain and then open the main make file on the root on the root on the main source code folder. And you can see it very well. <laughs> but it's basically you would have like this. All the plugins that were in there. I just made it so it's just a, the gain plugin. Mm. Okay, so far. Mm. But hopefully, you will understand soon. Ah. You can. On the main source code, not in the plugins, no, outside, on the main folder. Yes. You probably want to let me check if everyone has it. Uh, do you have it there? Well, I'll keep going. Then just to, you, so you guys have an overview of what's going on. Mm. Is it possible to turn down the lights? <laughs> because the screen is dark, then we can see it. Mm -hmm. Where we are? OK. 
okay, okay. Now we can see it slightly better. Hmm? Yeah, I can also, also maybe we can see it better if I switch to Is this better? Yes. Okay, so this is the actually the distro plugin.h file. Hello. Which describes the plugin. Uh, I already you already have here some of the fields defined. This one we don't need. Okay, so the plugin name, we can call it my gain or something. You can have it new UI. This will be used for um, LV2. LV2. The brand, you don't actually need it for now. And we take all this, well, inputs one, outputs one. You, yes, one input, one output. Actually, we can make it to make it less boring. Yes, uh, everything else you can delete it. If it's not there, uh, it assumes some default. Uh, it assumes you don't have it. If you don't define, for example, the UI, the UI in that case is zero. If you don't define it, the default is none, doesn't have it. Same for the time position, everything else. And let's go back to, to where this was. Two and two. Okay, so it's pretty simple, I think. If you're just copying, you already know how it's going to happen. Uh, we have our plugin file. First, we have, well, for the regular code, the import, in this case, the distro plugin class. And here, you subscribe the, the plugin class. Uh, I think it's better if I actually show you the plugin class itself. Just a sec. Yes, this is the plugin. You can see it at the top. The plugin class has three uh, constructor vari variables on the constructor to tell the number of parameters, the number of programs, and the number of states. Uh, we won't go through programs and states right now, but for parameters, it's just uh, something that you can control with. You're, if you use plugins, you probably know what a parameter is. Um, and for programs, it's the um, the factory. It's called factory provided presets. But so in this case, we know it's parameters, programs, and states. So on this little file we have here, we wanted to make a gain, so we just make one parameter. It's going to be the gain. And then zero programs, zero states for now. And for the members at the bottom, I can make this the gain. Okay. This is simple, I think. <laughs> So next, as we saw in the example, we have the some um, meta information about the plugin. You can just 
give it a name and stuff like that. In this case, we had the label maker. I don't. We don't need the home page license, whatever license you want, and then the version. In this case, we use a an internal function just to get an hexadecimal version of one zero zero. Uh, you also have a unique ID that is used for VST and LATSPA, but it, well, not all hosts uh, support this. Some hosts actually ignore this. Well, when, yeah. So the functions you're just uh, thrown away are optional. Yes, the the ones that you need, uh, I put it where. Here. Well, I can click it. Are the label maker license version and unique ID. I added some recently about the description and home page. There are just metadata for LV2, but these are the ones that you actually need. And you can see it on the distro plugin class. Let me show you. Yes, about the information. You have a get name that already has a, an implementation. These ones are zero, so that means you have to implement them yourself. The description is empty by default, There's, so it's optional. Home page is also optional. The maker license version of unique ID is not optional. Okay. The next thing you'll have to implement is the init parameter. That's just so the, the host knows uh, what kind of parameters the plugin has. And the class the file I'm showing already has a, a an implementation that you can we can just modify how you want. It's not a boolean. It's automatable. Let's see. Let's see. We only have a parameter, one single parameter, so we can just. I'll call this. Gain and here, gain. Okay, let's see if I can explain this. Uh, in a parameter, you have hints to say uh, what kind of parameter it is. In this case, it's just an automable parameter. Um, you have a ranges to say what's the minimum value, what's the maximum, and what's the default of that parameter. You have your name. You have this symbol, which is only used for LV2 right now, and the symbols must be unique. Uh, you can also have a unit, and I can show you here. Yes. This is the parameter. Uh, first, you have the hints, which is described. So let's see, let's see here. Uh, the first one is whatever is automable or not. If it's not automable, you, well, the host won't allow to automate the value, the parameter. Whatever it's a Boolean, then an integer and logarithmic. And the last one, if it's output or not. Um, VST doesn't support parameter outputs, so just take that into account. Uh, so, next. Then we have the ranges. Let's see if I can show that again. Yes. The name, the symbol, and unit. Uh, name and symbol are not optional. You have to define it to something. Uh, unit is optional. Um, it's used when you, well, to make things a bit better, so the whole user knows what it's modifying. And the ranges, it's just minimum, maximum, default. Yeah. Sorry. The unique ID. 
Well, the unique ID is a complex thing. Did I write it in the documentation there? Wait, 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 yes. Uh, the unique ID is something well, it was original done, originally done for VST, and lots but adopted it as well. But as I said, some hosts right now actually ignore the unique ID. Um, if you can get one that is not used by any other plugin, cool. But well, so far I only know one host that doesn't allow to load the plugin if it's the unique ID is duplicated. Well, the default implementation that I have it there, let me show you. Yeah. I just have uh, four characters, uh, LC characters, to define the, the unique ID. This gets transformed into a big number that, if it's unique enough, <laughs> it should not have conflicts. In this case, we can call it big M, then I. G, something like that. And well, it gets into a really, really big number. I, I don't give too much attention to the unique ID. If it has a, a conflict, you change it, but if, if not, fine. Then, okay. Uh, after the need parameter, you actually need to Implement parameter stuff. The first, the first one is just to return whatever the parameter value is because we just have one. I put it there. Uh, I'll I'll return the gain right away. And when we set the parameter value, I can just say this is equal to value. Yes. Every, well, in LV2, everything is float. In us, by LV2, is, everything is float as well. Uh, on VST, it's the same thing. Jack doesn't have parameters. But, well, float is the common denominator for um, parameters. Even, even if you say it's, if it's a Boolean or it's an integer, the value that the host stores, it's a float. And actually, I forgot to do one thing. I actually need to initi initialize the value to something. <laughs> uh, and the maximum should probably be two, default, one, and minimum zero. So that this way, default gets the audio as it is, maximum duplicates, minimum makes it silent. Uh, all clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we have. No, this is, I just commented out before. Because, if, because we only have one single parameter the index will always be zero in that case. The parameters. Yes, the previous implementation that I had here, if I control Z enough, I had it here, an array. Then the parameter count was an enumeration and now, um, yes, enumeration in C. That was some random value. And at the top, I made all the values zero. This was a special one. And then, let's see, let's see, let's see here. And get parameter value. It was just returning the index of the array. You can make it whatever you want to. Different variables, an array, or Wherever works. Yes, parameters are always um, asked by the host by index. So 
you probably will want to have the parameter the description of the parameters in your header file. I had it here in the distro plugin info.h. So that way the UI and the DSP code all share the same parameters. Okay. So the only other thing that is left is just the process function. And actually there's a bunch of code here that I don't need. So if this is a gain, you probably maybe already did this. Mm. Uh, the input and outputs, you can see there are arrays of arrays. In this case, it's a stereo plugin, so I can write it like this equals in the first input. And for the outputs is something like that as well. Except it is Yes, this is, well, something common. And now we just multiply everything by our gain value. Let's see. Yes, uh, I hope this is clear enough. Uh, if you already did a plugin before, this is usually how it goes. Uh, you have your, your inputs, your outputs of audio, and the number of frames. And the number of frames is just how many samples there are on each of those arrays. So we iterate the arrays and then multiply each value from the inputs to the outputs by the gain. That is our parameter. Uh, do you guys understand this? Okay, nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. You mean for a MIDI filter? Yeah, for example. Yes. Uh, then I get um, If you set it on the... I have it. You can check it documentation after this. Well, let me see if I can, if I know the URL. I think it's like this. Oh, sorry. Ah, yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. The next workshop. Hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, I was asking the question that um, if you uh, we declare two inputs and two outputs, and uh, this would be uh, for example uh, would be a plugin you put an audio stream in, otherwise it would have no effect. So my question was, if I remove the input or set it to zero, it will be automatically compiled to something like a synthesizer. Yeah, um, you have some macro specifically for that which I was hoping to, wait, wait. 
I was hoping to show here somewhere. Yes, the list of macros, which is also in here. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yes, you have a macro that is plugin is synth. If you define this, the distro plugin want MIDI input is automatically defined as well. If you don't define it for some reason. So in this case, the process function will be different. Um, let's see if I can show one example of this in the distro plugin. Yes, here. If it, if it has MIDI input, the process function will have the inputs outputs. Some of them can be null if you don't have inputs or outputs. Then you have your MIDI events and the, well, how many MIDI events there are. If you don't have MIDI, in the case we're talking about right now, the gain, the process function is the one uh, below. So let's see, let's see. We're almost done with this small, small example. This one had a callback for the buffer when the buffer size is changed. We don't actually don't need. And the last thing you need in the bottom is the entry point that is just a create plugin. Then you return a new instance of your plugin. As simple as that. And let's see. The make file for the where the source code for this is, I can just change some parts. I'm going to delete this, leave everything as it is, just for this example. And if it doesn't take too long, I hope. Now I'm actually just compiling it. It compiles the the DGL model. That's just UI stuff first. It's a single build for all the plugins. So after that, it will compile the plugin that we have. Yes, the VST, LV2, all right. And on our bin folder, we actually have now the VST version and the LV2 version. You can see it generated the money, the LV2 manifest for us. And you can check. Uh, we have here our plugin in LV2, audio inputs, audio outputs, or gain that has the default minimum maximum. And then the license maintainer, stuff like that, and the version as well. And now we can just run it. If I set this, this part you don't have to follow. It's just proving that it actually works. Yes. So in this little window here, we have the plugin that we just made now loaded in Jalvi with the gain parameter that goes from zero to two, right? Simple so far? <laughs> no. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I commented out in there. We don't have the UI made right now. If you comment it out, it will build. Well, the way I set up these make files is a bit complex to understand, but uh, basically we just have the name, name on the top, then the, the files for the DSP, the files for the UI, which is just the, the file dot O for the object. This includes the main make file magic, some nice tricks in there. And then depending on
<laughs> well, depending on the on the features you have enabled, if you have OpenGL, if you have Jack, stuff like that, it modifies the targets. If you just want to compile, let's say, a lot per version, Yes, it's possible as well. And yeah, the wait. If I'm not mistaken, yes, the lots per version is in there, which I can prove that it works using the list plugins. I think if I do lots per path equals. Hmm. List plugins actually say faults. <laughs> But uh, let's move on to get some nice things going. The actual UI. So on the same folder, there was there is the UI code. In this case, we import the Drizzt plugin info first, just to make sure it's there, because of the parameters. In this case, it's not needed. And we subclass the UI. Um, in DPF, the UI is uh, made with OpenGL, which is not something easy to, <laughs> to work with. But I made it already some existing classes that you can use uh, to make some back uh, background, some knobs, some stuff like that. And we'll do something like that very, very quickly. Let me just delete everything that is not needed here. Sample rate change, we don't care for this. Actually, I think I can delete everything. The only thing that you need to you need to implement is the on display. And I'm just going to put here the gain as well. Something quick. If I uncomment this from the make file, this. yeah, so now it, it will build the UI, or UI doesn't have anything in there yet. Um, I, sh I should tell you that the first parameter there on the UI class is for setting the size there. Uh, it comes with an MD size by default, so if, if you don't define it there, you can later call a set size. Like something like, something like this. If we build it now, uh, I think it's just a make will do. It will compile the UI together with the DSP. And if I load it in JLV, I think I need to redo something here. Just a sec, just a sec. Well, I'll do a new build. I just want to show you that the interface running. Uh, because we don't have anything there on the display, the interface will be all black for now. 
and it well let's see if it builds then well the first thing we'll want is probably some background for the plugin and just mm, it's almost there I'll add a background quickly if this actually worked mm. Uh, I know what's going on. I actually deleted this bit. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I actually need to say that the plugin has an UI, otherwise the UI is there doing nothing. So if I delete this a little bit, Yes, so this would be your UI that is right now just empty, doesn't do anything. So just to make things quick, I'll just add a quick background there. Mm. Let's see if I can copy it from something. This one. This part you don't have to follow. I just going to show something quick just to generate some artwork. There's a small utility I have in Python that converts uh, binary, file, binary files, in this case PNGs, or, or type of images, into uh, C code, so that you can use it directly for OpenGL. Which is, if I can open it, yeah, this big thing that is just raw data. And let's see if I can get this working. Now I need to see some examples because I don't remember how it was. Yes, like this. Where was it? Here? Just a second, just a second. Yep, so the image is in there. We need the, which just needs Ah, yes, this needs to be hard work. Is anyone also having the problem that... Uh... 
Uh, that would be if you don't have OpenGL installed the headers for that. But Internet line name is image. Yes, I need to import the image. And after that, we can go to some real examples. Okay, just need to import this. All right. Uh, I don't have time to explain everything here, but what I did was just importing an image using some utility to convert it to C code. Uh, I had an image class here. And then the image loads the data from that C file. And the size is actually the image size. Which, if everything goes well, load it in GLV. Oh, just need just need to actually display the image. If everything goes well, well, the plugin will have that image as the background. Yes. This is then you put some knobs on top of stuff like that. And well, that way you can build your own UI. Uh, I already have, as I said, I already have class there for sliders, knobs, uh, buttons, stuff like that. So it's at least for the pix, pix map based stuff is already there. Um, there's also an easier API for drawing 2D, 2D stuff via NanoVT. Like it's like a HTML5 canvas API that you can draw stuff with if you don't want to use raw OpenGL. Well, and now I I want to show some actual examples of this if I have everything updated. I'll lose color in here. And my computer is a bit slow. Let's see, let's see. Hello, GL. Yeah. This is one of the things you can do with OpenGL. If I put some generator here. Let's see if I can get it audio through here. Yes, you probably know this visual, visualization thing from somewhere else. It's copied from the XMM, the XPMC uh, visualization code. So if you know OpenGL, you can do, can do fancy stuff like that for the UI. If you want some something more basic, I have it. You can do stuff like mm, the cat is a bit faster than usual, but you have your knobs, the switch, and then some fancy animations if you want to. <laughs> yes. yes, this is Carla. The these color things are. Uh, Carlos specific stuff. These are the actual parameters. And yeah, it's just some direct access to some parameters. But yeah, you can see here you have your own your um uh parameters with the units. In this case it's actual just percentages. And yeah, this is basically what you can do with DPF. Uh, this plugin will work 
uh, cross-platform, VST, LV2, stuff like that. And let's go on. Uh, you can compile it for yeah for macOS and Windows. I actually have the setup to cross compile it on this machine because it's just make files so you can use MingW. Um, and you, there's something new I made a few months ago that you can do your DSP using Max. Then the, there's an option in Max Max Gen to export the file. And then you can set up a repository in DPF using that file, and that file gets transformed into a plugin. And well, there's basically it. There's not much time to show you everything here. What I can show you is the the link for the documentation, which is the bottom one. The work in progress documentation is in the bottom link. That also has some examples for stuff like latency, uh, parameters. Where is it? Yeah. First, uh, the parameter. You have programs, stuff like that. Uh, I, I need to work to make more examples for the other stuff. But yes, that's it. <laughs> uh, questions? Mm, no. Mm, if you want to see uh, examples of plugins made with DPF, if you go into the DPF uh, project page, the bottom has the some has links to plugins made with DPF. Most of them are made by me or some ports, and then some audio made made by Damien, I think. So yeah. So clone it, uh, fork it, then send me some requests or something like that. Hopefully this makes uh, your job on making plugins easier. <laughs> it certainly did for me because I had to do a bunch of stuff for every plugin. And now with everything already set up, it's uh, just take an example, modify a little bit, and then I have a working plugin already for v LV2, VST, lots by everything like that, which is nice. Uh, for DUI, it's just OpenGL because the, the graphics is then the OpenGL. Uh, for DSP, there's no dependency at all. Actually, for cross compiling, because I already includes the LATS and LV2 headers, everything, you don't have to install absolutely anything, just the compiler, because the headers are all there. And I was missing something. No, that's basically it. If you want to know about the, let's see if I have here, yes. Because OpenGL is not for everyone. There's uh, the NanoVG thing that you can use to draw 2D stuff, which are, is already integrated. So you can study this code and then do stuff like that. For me, that's it. Thank you.